Okay, now on to flush cutting the finger joints on the mirror box. So, before we proceed, I was going to show you the setup here. Right here I've got my router table, and in it I have a long flush cut bit. So there's a bearing on top that's going to ride against the surface of the mirror box, and it's going to take off the what you see, the extra stock that lays proud on the finger joints. So I'll get started on that, and we'll go from there. Okay, so of course we want our safety glasses on. I'm going to go ahead and start the router. Okay, so we now have all the finger joints flush cut, so we still have to get the top for the mirror box, and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use a round over router bit, and I'm going to round over these sharp corners on all four edges, and I will do the same to the top of the mirror box. So what we'll do now is go ahead and cut out the sheet for the top of the mirror box. On this, you can use um, more of a utility grade plywood if you like to save money because the top of the mirror box is going to be covered with Formica, so you'll never know that it was a, uh, you know, a poor grade of figure or a poor grade of grain. So utility grade's fine. Just want to make sure you fill all the voids because the sides will be exposed. So if there's any voids in the plywood itself, go ahead and fill those. Since I buy quite a bit of Baltic birch at once, I'm going to have just a uh, spare sheet of Baltic birch I'm going to use. And so this is about 20 by 20, so I'm going to cut it a little bit larger, like 20 and a quarter by 20 and a quarter. So then we'll install that, we'll glue and screw it down. I go ahead and use screws on it because you will never see those screws once the Formica is over it. Um, so with the glue and the screw, you know, you've got an extremely strong joint. And... Uh, We'll go from there. So next up, top of the mirror box. Okay, so I have cut the square piece that is gonna be outfitted as the top of the mirror box. Now what we need to do is glue and screw it down. So I'm not gonna need near as many clamps as I used for the glue up on the sides and the front of the mirror box because once we get it glued and clamped, I'm only gonna have it in the clamp for a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and put, oh, probably two, four, six, eight wood screws in it just to keep it uh, tacked down. Then I'll pull the clamps off. I won't even really need to worry about taking the time to let the glue set because those wood screws are going to keep it nice and tight. So I'll go ahead and spread the glue. There we are. We are glued down. So I'll take a moment, I'll go and uh, mark my areas that I'm gonna go ahead and put those wood screws in. You know, you want them probably somewhat evenly spaced. So I, I'm gonna use eight of them to start with, and then I'm gonna show you how and why I adv advocate for a pinned finger joint. We're actually gonna use one of the wood screws, or four of the wood screws rather, to pin these finger joints. So there's going to be a mechanical advantage to the joint other than just the glue up area. There's going to be a wood screw that goes down through at least three. I went ahead and just used my tri-square and I marked my eight locations on the top of the mirror box. This way they're evenly spaced. Then I'm going to go ahead and put those wood screws to keep it tacked down. Before I do the wood screws, and I say wood screws, they're actually just simple drywall screws. These are uh, relatively inexpensive and they work beautifully in plywood. You're never gonna see them again anyway. They're just there for the structural integrity of the scope. So I'm gonna use a 764 drill bit and I'm gonna go ahead and drill pilot holes or starter holes for all my screws. And then I'm gonna take a countersink and I'm gonna countersink the top 
That way those screws will be flush with the top. So when I put the Formica on, it doesn't stand up there on the edge. It's able to lay down flat. So that's what we'll do real quick. There we have it. So now we can take it, the clamps off. And even though I really don't need the glue to set before I do any kind of stressing on the top of it, I still want to flush cut the, uh, the edges here. So we'll do that again on the router table. But I'd like for the glue to get quite a bit drier than it is because I don't want a bunch of nasty glue in my router bit. So I'll probably wait a few hours before I flush cut it. Then, after I flush cut it on the router table, we'll use a handheld router and the circle cutting jig to cut the perfect circle on top so we can lower the, uh, the mirror in and also so the light can come in so we get an image. So that's what we'll do next. So now we wait. Okay, so there is one other thing we're gonna do um, before we flush cut the sides and we route the circle for the uh, mirror to go in. We're going to, I'm using a 3 32nd drill bit here again, and I'm gonna take just a simple nail, it's 3 seconds. you could use a wood screw if you don't have a nail, That's, it's really not important, this doesn't have to cinch in there really good. What it's basically going to do is it's gonna go through three of these fingers to give you that mechanical lock I'm looking for. So I'm gonna do that on each corner, take that countersink again and I'm just going to put a small countersink just big enough so that nail head is going to sit flush. Okay. Now we have that pinned finger joint I talk about. So that is that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and flush cut the top of the mirror box. I'm using the same flush cut bit. I've got my router table all set up and I'll go ahead and get started. And there we have it. As you can see, nice and flush. So now we need to uh, make the hole in the top of the mirror box so that we can both gently put the mirror in and also see through the telescope. <laughs> 